So I was looking at my list this morning on my things to get done for the day, and I realized pretty fast I may have bit off more than I could chew. I got a lot of stuff on there today. Kind of ambitious when I was writing it down. And this may help some of you guys out there. I started doing this a few years ago, and sometimes I'd get away from this and it always bites me. Because when I go back to it, it just makes me realize how good of a system it is. Write things down. If you're gonna go outside for the day and work, or you got a small business, or whatever you got going on, write down your goals for the day. Because you won't get them done, in my opinion, most of the time, if you don't write them down. It kind of helps you be accountable to yourself, because that's the only person at the end of the day that you have to answer to, especially if you're a small business owner like myself and you're self-employed, you gotta get things done. And you won't get those things done efficiently if you don't write them down. I learned that a long time ago, and if you do that, friends, you'll be a lot more productive during the day. And it's not hard. I usually do that the night before or the morning of the day I'm going to go outside and get some stuff done, which is pretty much every day here at my sawmill. And I have a daily planner, and I just open up the book. I got the date waiting on me with a paper clip, so I don't have to you know, go through the pages and try to figure out what day it is. And I write down my goals for the day, and I put little stars beside the ones that have to get done, and the rest of them are ones that I'm going to work on, but if I don't get them done, that's okay, but I am going to work on them. So have a list, because sometimes when you go outside to work, guys, if you're anything like me, you've got all these projects in your head and all this stuff that needs to get done, and it's hard to get it all done, and it's hard to start sometimes. If you have a list, it makes it a whole lot easier. So the first thing we need to do is get in the side-by-side -side and go put the dump trailer on it. And in the back of the side-by-side, -side, we've got a fresh new box of Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7s. And if you're wondering, I've never mentioned this in the videos before, Industrial Cutting Tools down in Georgia is where Joe Main actually works. I never mentioned that in the videos, but uh, that's the company he works for, ICT. Then over here in the other part of the dump bed, we got about nine gallons of windshield washer fluid. I use this in the sawmill in the winter time. That way my lubrication system for the lube miser on the mill does not freeze up. I found that the cheapest place to get this stuff for you sawyers out there in my area is Tractor Supply, $2.99 a gallon. I couldn't find it cheaper anywhere else and believe me, I looked. Now I did contact Napa the other day and they can sell me a 50 gallon drum of windshield washer fluid. It's either 50 or 55, I can't remember. But it comes out to being about 350 a gallon. So Tractor Supply is a little bit cheaper. If they could match that price at Tractor Supply, I'd probably buy the 55 gallon uh, toad off them. But until then, Tractor Supply it is. And also with us today, friends, we have the hatefulest cat on YouTube. Hello, mama. Are you in a better mood today? Probably not. But before I start it up, I better make sure Cabbage isn't asleep in his hammock. Nope. He's not up there today, but he's just about ready, or he's just about ruined this little soft top right here. He's really stretched it out. I should probably order a hard top. He wouldn't like that as good though. Not as comfortable.
All right, guys, if you recall in the last video, we moved a lot of those cedar logs out of this corner down here beside the timber frame. And we got a lot of wood chips down here that come out of the molder. So the dust chute for the molder is right there. And it's kind of pointing outward and the wind kind of moves all of it over here before it goes up that bank right there on my neighbor's place. The uh, property line is about 15 feet past that berm right there where the wood chips end and the grass starts. And there's quite a bit of wood shavings down here. This is mostly pine, poplar, and cedar. There's no walnut in here. So it's good for the garden. We're gonna grab the T25 and scoop most of this up because it's not gonna do anybody any good just laying down here, it's gonna make a mess. And we'll put it in the dump trailer and take it up to the compost pile.
guys, I'm finishing up an order for some red cedar, and this log right here is probably not going to be part of that order. I just grabbed it because I was back there. I'm trying to get all my cedar sawed up and moved out of the way. It's uh, 122 inches, so just over 10 feet long. And uh, this log has got a lot of issues, guys. You saw me trimming off these knots, or these limbs, rather. There's a lot of knots. Now, knots on eastern red cedar is not actually a defect because it's hard, really, really hard to get red cedar without any knots. I've never found any, to say the least, but uh, these knots right here are pretty bad because of the size of them and the amount of them. And, and this log has a sweep to it right here in the middle. So it's kind of like a banana, you know, over exaggerating what's going on there, but you know what I mean, so. Not a very good saw log. I'm gonna to try to get a six inch cant out of this. Let me measure the small end. I need at least nine inches for a six inch cant. And we're sitting on, gosh, eight and a half inches. I don't think I'll be able to get one to be honest with you guys. If I can't get a six inch cant out of this, I'm gonna square it up and make a 10 foot four by four. That'll be good to have around. So uh, that'll be the goal with this log. That's probably what will happen here. I doubt I will get a six inch cant out of this. So uh, that's what we'll do, a four by four, more than likely. The next log after that is going to be six inches wide, six quarter on the thickness. If you're new to this channel, that's an inch and a half on the thickness and I need to saw up 10 and I've already got two, so eight more. I may get eight out of that log, I don't know. I hope I do, but if I don't, we'll grab another one. So uh, that's what we're doing here. If I do get six inches on this, I may see how it looks and do six quarter on this one as well and throw it in with that order just as a bonus. Guys like that. If you got a customer getting, uh, who's buying lumber from you and you can throw in a few extra boards, they will remember that because when you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, they don't throw in no extra lumber. You get what you get. So uh, this may be a bonus law, but I'm guessing probably a four by four. So that's what we'll do. And I don't have my good measuring tape with me. I laid it down somewhere and I can't find it. I've got this old Stanley here. I keep my measuring tape on a holster and I took the holster out earlier and I'm not sure where I put it. I've got to find that. It's driving me crazy. I've been looking for the past 30 minutes. So we'll get these two logs taken care of and then we'll move on to something else. And a few announcements here we'll get started. Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7 on the mill. If you want to try out those blades, call Joe. Cell phone numbers in the video description. Shout out to Logrite. Got the banner up here behind me for sponsoring the channel. And thanks to everybody on Patreon and all the YouTube members for helping me uh, or, help, or helping support me here on this channel. I really appreciate you guys. We've had a really good year and there's a lot to come before this year's over. So uh, thank you all very much. And to everybody that watches my videos, thank you guys as well. I really appreciate it. And. Still got some hoodies with the zipper and sweatshirts over on the Farm Focus site. There's a link down below. Appreciate your support.
right guys, one thing you have to do when you saw cedar is pay attention to the end grain. If you look on the face right here, you think to yourself, that looks pretty good right there. Nice clear cedar, no rot, a little bit of wane right there, but no big deal. But when you come down here to the end, it looks like it's on both sides. Check that out. That is rot right there in the middle and that will be on the face of the lumber. So in order to avoid that rot and not so much avoid because we will saw into this eventually, I'm gonna come on the top right here on this face and get my six quarter board right there. And it should be clear, hopefully. And then we'll flip it again and saw from the bottom and get maybe two boards right there. And that will leave us with this mesh right here in the middle and there's the pith right there as well. So probably three decent boards out of this log, six quarter, about eight inches wide. I made them a little bit wider than they needed to be. And we'll be left with this mess in the middle. And I'm not sure what we'll do with this. See what it looks like when we get to it.
So Bruno is ready for the tractor ride. Bruno, you wanna say hi to everybody? Hey! Bruno's, I'm on YouTube, yeah. take my videos on YouTube. <laughs> What'd you say? I'm on YouTube, take my videos on YouTube. Bruno is on YouTube, guys. I'll leave a link down there to his channel. He makes uh, videos about his little animatronics. Did I say it right? Oh, uh, yeah. Animatronics, what's your channel name? Bruno Everett Elliott. Bruno Everett Elliott. That's his full name. I'll find the channel. I'll leave a link down below. So if you want to watch the best toy videos in the world, go check out his channel. But for right now, it's time for a tracker ride. And Bruno, this messes up my list. I was writing down what I had to do today, and the last thing I was going to do was cut firewood. Looks like we're going to be riding the tracker instead. You know what, Bruno? What? I need to clean my windshield. Oh. This thing's filthy. 